Hello. How are you? I hope you're doing well. Today, we're diving into something truly exciting, the future of car technology. Imagine a car powered by nothing but water. Sounds unbelievable, right? But this might just be the game changer we've all been waiting for. If you're ready to learn about one of the most mind-blowing advancements in car technology, hit that like button, subscribe to Auto Intel, and let's dive into the future of energy. Let's start our topic. The auto industry is always changing. We know that. But are we about to see a whole new revolution? More and more engineers and scientists are now working to find real alternatives to fossil fuels. They are starting to challenge everything we thought we knew. Elon Musk has pointed out many times that Tesla builds the cheapest electric motors on the market, mainly because they have found a way to completely remove rare earth materials, which are normally very expensive. But even with this achievement, it's still not the cheapest or most groundbreaking motor Tesla has created. Right now, there's a lot of excitement about a different kind of engine, one that could totally change the technology game. It's an engine that runs on water. Yes, you heard it right water. Water could play a major role in powering this new engine. Before you get too excited, let's clear something up. It's not as simple as pouring a few gallons of water into a car and driving for miles. As cool as that sounds, that's not how a water engine works. Even though the term, water engine, might sound easy to understand, it's a little misleading. In reality, these technologies mostly use water to produce or help generate energy, rather than using water directly as the main fuel. Water covers about 71% of the Earth's surface and is renewable. But the idea of turning it into enough energy to power a car still seems almost too good to be true. We know that traditional internal combustion engines create power by burning fuels like gasoline. They use a spark plug to ignite the fuel, move the pistons, and power whatever they are connected to, like a car or a generator. Unfortunately, water can't burn. It doesn't produce the spark needed to work inside a regular engine. So, how does a water engine actually work? First, the car or engine would have a water tank. The water needs to be clean or at least filtered to get rid of any impurities that could harm the electrolysis system. After that, the process of electrolysis begins. Water is made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Hydrogen is one of the most powerful energy sources on the planet. But, as long as those hydrogen atoms are connected to oxygen, they can't be used as fuel. So, the first thing to do is break apart the molecule before we can use the hydrogen inside. Electrolysis is the process that uses an electric current to split water molecules into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. The hydrogen gas is then sent to a fuel cell in the car. In the fuel cell, the hydrogen reacts with oxygen from the air, generating electricity, along with water vapor and heat as byproducts. The electricity created powers the electric motor, which makes the car move. This electric system removes the need for a traditional combustion engine, which means zero tailpipe emissions. From what we know, it takes about 5 kilowatt hours of electricity to create 1 cubic meter of hydrogen gas. From just 1 liter of water, about 0.26 gallons, you can get about 111 grams of hydrogen, which is roughly equal to more than 1 cubic meter of hydrogen gas under normal conditions. To power a small car for 100 kilometers, around 62 miles, you would need between 1 and 1.5 kilograms of hydrogen. This means you would need to electrolyze between 9 and 13 liters of water, or roughly 2.38 to 3.43 gallons, using between 50 and 180 kilowatt hours of electricity. This is a huge amount of energy, almost 10 times the energy it takes to fully charge a smartphone. Once the hydrogen is created, there are two main ways to use it. You can burn it in an engine like gasoline, or you can send it to a fuel cell to generate electricity and power an electric motor. Burning hydrogen in an engine gives you an efficiency of about 25 to 35 percent, while fuel cells are much more efficient, reaching about 50 to 60 percent. In theory, a water engine sounds amazing. Just use water, which is cheap and abundant, and the only byproduct is water vapor, meaning no pollution. 
If we could separate hydrogen from water quickly and easily, a water engine could completely replace gasoline, giving us a clean and sustainable energy source for the future. Some reports even suggest that, compared to traditional combustion engines, water engines using hydrogen fuel cells could offer better energy efficiency. This means that more of the energy stored in hydrogen would be turned into usable energy, giving better fuel economy and a longer driving range. However, when we look at things more closely from a technical and practical perspective, the water engine has some big challenges, much bigger than we might expect. To be honest, it's not really an EV killer at this point. To separate hydrogen from water, a lot of electricity is needed. The electrolysis process uses far more energy than the hydrogen it creates, leading to very low overall efficiency. If you tried to power electrolysis directly from the car's own battery while driving, the battery would drain really quickly. On top of that, designing an electrolysis system that's fast enough, safe enough, and small enough to fit inside a car is very complicated and expensive. Hydrogen itself is also highly flammable, meaning you would need special high-pressure tanks to store it, adding both cost and safety concerns. Compared to current electric vehicles that simply charge a battery directly with high efficiency and relatively quick charging times, the water engine is much less practical and efficient. Instead of trying to separate water into hydrogen inside the vehicle itself, big companies like Toyota and Hyundai are going a different route. They are creating hydrogen at special facilities and then using fuel cell technology to generate electricity in the car. This method is more efficient and safer. So while the idea of a water engine sounds amazing in theory, no emissions, just clean water vapor, it's not yet a realistic or better alternative to current technologies like pure electric vehicles or hydrogen-powered vehicles. When you hear that the only waste from a water engine is water vapor, no exhaust gases, no pollution, just clean energy, it seems like a technology that could change everything. It aligns perfectly with the sustainability goals of people like Elon Musk. But given all the problems and the fact that so much work still needs to be done to make it work, it's clear that this kind of technology isn't ready for Tesla's lineup at the moment. The reality is, Toyota already has a hydrogen-powered car called the Mirai, which first came out in 2014 and has been getting better over time. This new wave of water engine technology is improving, making it cheaper, safer, and more efficient. Toyota has stuck with the water engine idea because they believe it could become a major game changer, especially if they can figure out how to get hydrogen with a lot less energy. On top of that, Toyota has a big advantage when it comes to battery technology, the very technology that everyone in the industry is racing to improve. Toyota owns over 1,000 patents related to this technology. It's clear that we're seeing a major shift right now with the development of next generation batteries for electric vehicles. Solid state batteries, in particular, are being called a revolution for the EV world. Toyota, one of the leaders in this technology, has boldly said they plan to put solid state batteries into their electric cars by 2027. The amazing features of solid state batteries are set to completely change the EV landscape. They could even threaten Tesla's dominance with its 4,680 battery technology. To understand solid state batteries, we first need to know the basic structure of a battery. All modern batteries have four main parts an anode, a cathode, a polymer separator, and a liquid electrolyte. In solid state batteries, the liquid electrolyte is replaced with a solid one. This is the main difference that makes solid state batteries so much better than the lithium ion batteries that Tesla uses today. Solid state batteries have several big advantages over regular lithium ion batteries. The first is energy density. Solid state batteries can reach an energy density of up to 400 watt hours per kilogram, which is much higher than the 250 watt hours per kilogram of today's lithium ion batteries. This allows them to store more energy for the same weight. This is especially important for electric vehicles, where both weight and efficiency are very important. Solid state batteries also have a volumetric energy density of up to 1200 watt hours per liter, compared to about 700 watt hours per liter for regular batteries. Research from Quantum Cape, an American company in which Volkswagen has a 5% stake, shows that their solid state batteries have an energy density of more than 1000 watt hours per liter. 
this could help electric cars go as far as gas-powered cars on a single charge. Another big benefit is the fast charging ability of solid-state batteries. At Tesla's supercharging stations, the 2170 battery cells can usually go from 10% to 80% in about 30 to 40 minutes. The newer 4680 cells can do it in just around 25 minutes. But solid-state batteries are even faster. According to data from Quantum Cape, solid-state batteries can reach 80% charge in just 15 minutes. Toyota claims their solid-state batteries could charge from 10% to 80% in just 10 minutes, almost as fast as filling up a gas tank. This quick charging is due to the solid electrolyte, which has high ionic conductivity. This helps the lithium ions move faster, which speeds up the charging time without shortening the battery's life compared to regular lithium ion batteries. One big problem with lithium ion batteries is the risk of fire or explosion, due to the liquid electrolyte. Solid state batteries don't have this risk. They don't contain liquid electrolytes, so they are much safer. Lithium ion battery fires are rare, but when they do happen, they can be very dangerous and need a lot of water to put out. Solid state batteries are also much more stable under extreme conditions, like severe crashes, so they are less likely to catch fire or explode. The main push for changing the car industry is the growing demand for electric vehicles, which are replacing traditional internal combustion engines. For EVs to become a mainstream choice, they must offer a driving range like gas-powered cars, with less time spent charging and longer-lasting batteries. One way to increase an EV's range is to add more batteries, but this is not the best solution because it increases the cost and takes up too much space. A better option is to create a new type of battery that's stronger, safer, has higher capacity, and charges quickly. But that's not easy. Solid-state batteries are still facing big challenges. One of the biggest problems is that they are expensive to produce. Manufacturing solid-state batteries is still costly because the technology is in its developmental stage. Despite their impressive potential, the production costs are still high, and researchers are working to reduce these costs before they can be widely produced at a large scale. Another challenge is finding the right materials for the solid electrolyte that can conduct electricity well at room temperature, while also ensuring that the batteries are safe and long-lasting. Furthermore, there is the issue of dendrite formation, which could cause short circuits in the battery. However, researchers are dedicated to finding solutions for these problems. As of now, solid-state batteries have the potential to revolutionize the EV world, offering longer driving ranges, faster charging times, and improved safety. But, significant hurdles remain before we can see them implemented on a large scale. It's an exciting area of research, and if these challenges are overcome, solid-state batteries could become the future of electric vehicles, offering a truly groundbreaking alternative to current battery technology. And that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this dive into the world of water-powered engines. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for the latest updates on all things automotive and tech. Goodbye, and stay tuned for more exciting content right here on Auto Intel.